Good morning, and welcome to a Bible, another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. This morning service here, so we got about a 10-minute devotional-like thing that we, we do with you. So we studied the Holy Spirit, and we're talking about the names and titles of the Holy Spirit. Now this is part two of that, and we'll finish that up today, but we see all the things that the Holy Spirit is. He's, he gives all kind of word descriptions of Him that we understand a little bit better of His ministry in the life of a believer. So uh, today we're going to pick up with, He's the Spirit of Wisdom and revelation. So if I look over in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, he says that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh, we need to study the Bible. We need to read the Bible, study the Bible, and learn what God says. Um, over in Hosea, God gave a warning. He said this. He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee thou, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Over in Matthew 22, 29, says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. It's, it's so important that we study the Bible and you know, a lot of people read it, and they'll, they like favorite passages. I got certain scripture I like to read, and certain chapters and that. But the, the idea is that we need to study the whole Word of God, the counsel of God, because it all fits together, and He's given us the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that you got the, you're got you indwelled by the Holy Spirit, so I can just open the Bible any place I want to open it and read it, and I'll have a full understanding of what He's saying. No, don't work that way. Uh, we need uh, His gifted commentators and that to write uh, commentaries on these different things, uh, men that know the Greek and the Hebrew, and, and they can really lay it out for you. You can learn a lot uh, when, through word studies, but you need to study it. You need to put some work into it. You have the Word of God in the Bible. We have the Spirit of God indwelling us. So you need to, not to grieve Him or to hinder Him, but you not need to you need to get into the Bible and study it so He can work through you. So that's the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Then we go a little bit further, and He is the the Comforter. Okay, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in My name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I, things I have said to you. So we see here that. He's referring back. They said, Jesus told him, the comforter's going to come. He's going to help you to remember. Uh, there's different times in the, the ministry of Christ with his disciples. He'll tell them something, especially when he talks about his death, burial, and resurrection. And uh, they didn't understand. And it's, it's not like they don't question him right then. It's kind of like it went over their head. They were thinking of something else, and so therefore they, they missed it. And the Bible talks about that they missed it. So we see here the comforter, that's the one that's like the paraclete, like a lawyer. He comes alongside of you and he helps you in your walk. And so that comfort is that remember he's going to abide with us and he is in us. So we have this Holy Spirit all around us to help us get through the, this walk of life. He's the Spirit of promise over in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. It says, And being assembled with them, I commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. This is Christ talking to his disciples. Remember, they're right there. He's ready for the ascension here in just a couple verses. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. And remember back over in John chapter 14, we just read about that. He says, And the Father will send the Comforter. So you wait for that paraclete. You wait and have to, until he comes. And we know what happened the day of Pentecost. Here he came, and there he came, and he dwelled him. So the idea is uh, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He says right over here in, in verse 5, For John truly baptized with water. But listen, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. And that's what he's talking about. But that's those things that happen when you get saved. Uh, we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. We're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. All those things happen when we get saved. That day that we get saved, that's all this baptism. It's not water baptism, but it's by the Holy Ghost. So we see all that uh, taking place then. And so we see not only that, we see the spirit of adoption. In verse in Romans 8, 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, Abba means Daddy. And we have that, we're born into the family of God. We've not received the, the spirit of bondage, if the fear of the back under the law, but you were set free. And we have received the spirit of adoption. We've been adopted into the family of God. You remember here, uh, in one of the earlier sessions, we talked about the fact that if you don't have the spirit of God, you're not one of His. You can't be a Christian and not have the spirit of God. And that's kind of what He's saying to you. You've been adopted into the family of God. So we see that, that 
the adoption takes place and then that day and time adoption couldn't be reversed. It was as good as being born into the family. And from some says that was even better. Then we see the spirit of holiness. We see the idea that I, Paul's writing over in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 14. He says, I am, a, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, uh, both to the wise and the unwise. So we see that Paul's talking about there. He says we have a, the spirit of holiness. If there's anything that, that uh, is in our life, any uncleanness, any, uncleanness, any defilement or anything, what he's saying is that grieves the spirit. It uh, grieves and hinders the spirit as he's wanting to work in us and through us. So we need to be sure that we get all that stuff out of it because he's a spirit of holiness. And so we and keep in mind now, he is, he is God. So when we commit sin in this temple, in his temple, this temple is used to, to commit sin, then, then that grieves him. Uh, he is, it, it, to, to him, it's just like the holiness of God. He is repulsed by it. It's an abomination to him. If you remember when uh, Isaiah looked up and he saw the vision and Christ sitting on the temple and, and he was under such conviction and his uncleanness. He said, I am a man of unclean lips amongst the people of unclean lips. He, he recognized who he was, his sinfulness, and he humbled himself before the throne of God. I, I think that so many times we have a tendency, we, we forget. We have a tendency to forget how holy God is and how much he hates sin. God is completely sanctified. He's separated from sin. And that's why, because of His holiness, that's why we, when we get caught up in sin, as we talked in the earlier session there, and, and He says, you know, when you, when you get caught up in sin, and it's that barrier, it hinders your prayers. So you need to confess your sins, as in 1 John 1, 9. And He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then to reestablish that fellowship. Didn't lose, our didn't lose that relationship. We lost fellowship. And sin is that damning thing that, that damages our, our fellowship. But it does not remove our relationship. Always remember that. The relationship and the fellowship. The relationship never changes. The fellowship does change. All right. So we want to be sure that that Holy Spirit's there. He's not going to leave you. We know he's there. He's not, no matter what I do or what I say, if I'm truly born again, I'm, he's not going to leave me. If I'm not born again, he's not there to start with. All right, so the idea is I'm going to be mindful of who he is and I'm, that I'm going to be, he, he hates sin, so I'm going to try to live the best life that I can and to, to sin less, not to be sinless, but to sin less. Okay, then we see that he's the spirit of faith over in 2 Corinthians 4.13. He talks about that. He says, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. He is the spirit of faith. Uh, we, anything, when we doubt our salvation, we doubt our, our, our relationship with him. We have all that, I have all those problems. And we, we need to be aware of that. And uh, that grieves the spirit and that hinders the spirit. Uh, he's, he's our seal. If you remember back, he, he's that seal. The Holy Spirit is a seal. He says, this, this is identifying us. That seal identifies us as being a child of God. It's not, a, not something that's just stamped on us and goes on. He is the seal. So in the Holy, when the Father looks down, he sees that Holy Spirit seal upon us. He knows that we're his. And so when we doubt our salvation, we look at all these verses, uh, we know that I'm indwelled by the Holy Spirit, and that's an evidence of my salvation. All these things reaffirm that I truly am saved, and I can have that confidence. And that's because we have the Holy Spirit. See, don't, don't doubt it. Just put your faith and trust in Christ. Believe what God says in His Word, and you're saved. Okay? We go through the whole thing, but I repent and put my faith in Christ. That's what the Bible tells me to do. And when I do what I'm supposed to do, I'm saved. So, and it, once I'm saved, I'm always saved, but I don't always live like I'm saved. So keep in mind as we continue our study of the Holy Spirit, uh, we'll be getting on to a little bit more about some of the emblems of the Holy Spirit in the next few sessions. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you again for your love for us and how you take care of us day by day. We just pray, Father, that we not hinder and not grieve the Holy Spirit as we go through this pathway of life, that we would bless you and bless others. And we just ask you to work in a mighty way, Lord, that would lift up the name of Jesus, that those that don't know Christ as their Savior, that they would have a desire to know the one who died for them. And that Holy Spirit of conviction can speak to their hearts and through your word and through, through a believer and touch them, Lord, and come to, where they come to know Jesus. We thank you for loving us, and we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.